Turtle-tastic. I finally got out to the theater to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem this weekend, and I was thoroughly impressed. Let me tell you what works, what doesn't, then I'll give you the family score and their thoughts. I brought a lot with me to the theater for this movie. Excitement, because I was a big turtle fan when I was a kid. The movie looks like a lot of fun, and I am absolutely loving this new art style that's everywhere ever since Spider-Verse burst onto the scene five years ago. But I also had some reservation, because Seth Rogen is more missed than hit, for me. He can certainly be funny sometimes, but usually he veers so far into immaturity that it's cringy. And then you've got the times when he's trying to score points with his liberal atheist buddies with his ham-fisted messages. I am so pleased to tell you that Rogan and the other writers and director Jeff Rowe had the self-awareness to know they were making a kid's movie and left most of that nonsense at the door and delivered a fun experience for kids and adults. Rogan even had the restraint to cast himself as Bebop and he only had a few lines. It really did strike a great balance of being childish without being annoying and also including enough entertaining stuff that even you adults are going to have a great time with this one. The only real weakness in this movie is the villain, but I can give that a pass because really this is an origin story about the turtles. This movie really is about them, their relationship, them choosing to come out of the sewer for the first time and be crime fighters and figure out how to be a team. So Splinter has warned them they will never be accepted by society, humans are very dangerous, don't ever go up out of the sewer, but after their first crime fighting mission is successful, if clumsily executed, they decide they can win the approval of humanity by fighting crime, specifically fighting the shadowy crime lord known as Superfly, who is voiced excellently by Ice Cube. The post credit scene involved a little bit more of the secondary antagonist from this movie and also showed us the Shredder, so I expect stronger villains going forward, but for now, we're really focusing on the brotherhood and the banter and the camaraderie between the turtles. It's possible they could have done more with the villain because the movie does clock in at just an hour and 40 minutes, but they wisely decided to just call it this is a kid's movie, we don't need to exceed two hours. They deserve a lot of credit, the pacing is very well done here. I wasn't feeling bored in the middle like I have been for a lot of movies recently. They crammed a lot of story into 99 minutes without it ever feeling bloated or feeling like they were racing through the story beats. We had a solid blend of story, action, and character building that was all balanced very well. We've also got April who is an aspiring journalist and she agrees to write stories about the turtles' heroism so she and they can get approval from the world. Throughout the movie, we're showcasing these themes of family and teamwork, not doing the right things but for the wrong reason, not judging people in order to preempt them from judging you. It's a very cohesive theme all the way through and it never felt heavy handed. What I like about this movie is that they're trying to tweak some of the popular things that we've been seeing in movies lately and stand out in its own way. The art style for example, you're probably thinking okay they're doing the, the Spider-Verse, Arcane, Puss in Boots 2 thing, which I'm not mad about because I love that style. But they tweak it and make it their own by making it look a little sloppy and that sounds bad but this movie really pulls off making things look bad in a good way. The easiest example is explosions or tire smoke. You've got the stylized smoke like we've been seeing but then they put like some scribbles on top of it. A lot of this movie looks to be made with colored pencil. Often you will see colors or textures that are not blended or you've probably seen the text on the sewer lid that doesn't look super clean and you might think that's going to look bad but they pull it off in a very interesting way. You got humans that are drawn and colored just a little bit off. So much of this movie is about being a teenager, and it's reflected in things like the art style and the dialogue. It feels like they had a teenager on the writing and art staff. Again, with the dialogue, this movie walks the line of being bad but in a good way by fitting the setting. When the trailer came out, I was worried that the turtles were going to be annoying. You know, like teenage boys are sometimes annoying. And while it is true that the turtles almost never shut up, it works in this movie. Their dialogue just felt natural. The voice actors for the turtles put in a great performance, and it sounds like they were having a load of fun. So I was writing all this down, and on paper, it sounds terrible. But they pulled off something impressive here, combining elements that sound bad and putting them together in a way that reflects the unpolished writing and art skills of a teenager, but without crashing into actually being an unprofessional production. It was really cool. I also want to point out the score on this one. It was fantastic. We had some throwbacks to turtle themes of the past. We had some really cool beats playing alongside the action. One particular scene had No Diggity by Blackstreet playing, which made my little millennial heart happy. The music and sound on this one is great. So I try to avoid watching reviews for stuff that I intend to see and review so I don't just copy them, but I couldn't help see some headlines about some LGBT 
LGBT stuff that was in this movie, which it, there is none. I know a lot of people were concerned about that because of Seth Rogen's involvement, and I think parents have every right to know what their kids are going to see in a movie, and I know a lot of you watching me are parents, and you want to know. I had heard Splinter has a boyfriend, uh, though it is clearly a female cockroach that he ends up with in the end. They do kiss for a minute in the most disgusting way possible, but the, the grossness of the situation is supposed to be played for laughs. The cockroach, the final giant mutant, a lot of the mutants, a lot, there's a lot of vomiting, there's a lot of gross, a lot of body horror type stuff. It's just kind of gross throughout the movie. The only other gross or Seth Rogen-y thing in this movie is this milking joke they keep trying to do. Seriously, they tell it like eight times. Other than that stuff, if you're worried about inappropriate things because Seth Rogen, worry not. I think this movie is going to be a big success and I hope they learned the right lessons here. They made this for an incredible 70 million dollars when other movies consistently go over a hundred. After its second weekend it's a real shame it doesn't look like it's going to be commercially successful by ticket sales but the toy sales and licensing are more than going to make up for it. So I've got a wide range of kids you want to know what they think about it. Here are the scores up on screen. You can see a lot of eights and nines. It was very popular with them. I asked them what they liked and what they didn't like and almost across the board all the kids said the same thing on their pros they like the the art style they like the banter between the turtles they like how natural they felt like brothers and just their relationship was so much fun and every one of them said they did not like the gross the puking the slime coming out of people's mouths and crap like that other than that my seven-year-old pointed out he liked the scene where splinter came in and beat up an entire room of guys all by himself to save his sons he also really liked the villain probably because he also really likes Candlemaker from the Book of Life. Ice Cube voices both of them. Lastly, the three-year-old was pretty interested in this one. A little squirmy, but, you know, three-year-old. No bathroom breaks, and I asked her what she liked about it. She said April was very funny. Finally, my wife gave it an 8 out of 10 as well. She took points off for the exact same reasons. There's a lot of gross. There's vomit and spit and body horror with the mutants and oozing and just a lot of yuck. For me, is this theater or rental? Definitely theater. The music, the colors, it's really a better theatrical experience than it will be if you rent it at home. Do I regret the ticket purchase? Absolutely not. We had a blast and I think you will too. And would I see it again? Absolutely. I cannot wait to rent this one. And if you have a smaller family than mine, you might even want to go see this twice in the theater. So have you seen the Turtles movie? What did you think about it? Have you been avoiding it? And are the positive reviews making you reconsider? I look forward to reading your thoughts. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.